Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Great Day Washington. I'm Kristen Bursett Harris with Ellen Bryan. We have Lil Mo coming on the show yes, this morning. That's so right. She's in a new um, play, the Set It Off stage play. So we're excited to talk to her. And we're going to do some ballroom dancing to, mm -hmm. to get in shape. Improve your health. Who knew? Huh? Ballroom dancing improves your health. And kind of let you release. Yes. Some of that, yeah, stress you might be feeling. But As you've been learning. Yeah, it's fun. I'm doing DC's Dancing Stars, and it is so much fun to dance, even though I'm not very... You're still working. You're just working. I'm working on it. You're there you go. Progress, I like that. Uh, we're going to start off the news this morning, though, with something up north. And what some, you got? Yeah, something we've talked about before. Can, uh, Canada's Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau, he appears to have won another term. The Canadian Broadcasting Corporation projects that Trudeau's Liberal Party won enough seats in last night's election to form a minority government. This means that Trudeau appears to have survived what we talked about, which was that brown face scandal from earlier this year. Images, images of him in brown face makeup as a young man resurfaced. He apologized for it, telling reporters his behavior was unacceptable. And Kristen, what I have heard in this election that he lost the majority of votes, but still had enough to win this second to get term. The minority mm -hmm. government. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, and he, um, we talked too about how it was interesting how it all kind of came up right before the election, yeah. you know, something from years ago. As we start to see this happening, you know, the skeletons start to come out of the closet. But I th it seems to be you that- You push him out before someone right. reveals them like this situation. So he, he seemed to have it. survived that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This one, this story is so cool. You know the iconic little toy soldiers, little green ones yeah. that people have always played with? Well, they're getting an update. A female toy soldier is actually going into production nice. after this frustrated six-year-old girl from Arkansas. Her name was Vivian Lord. She wrote the company this handwritten letter. It was adorable. She wrote the company BMC Toys to complain. And you know what? They listened. So now they're making these. She said something. They had little pink ones that were all still men. And she goes, I want the green ones in a woman. Right. Because that's what my I'll play with and all my friends will too. I love that. Instead of a pink one as a woman, just right. have it. That, have it I mean, the, the women are there in the military. The soldiers are there with the men right, right along. It's no different. So there, good for you. There was also a woman in the Army who said that she, when she leaves to go serve, she wants to leave her kids with something that represents her. And all oh. she had was the little men figurines. Mm -hmm. So she was also tweeting like, this is amazing because now I have something to leave my kids. Isn't it incredible to see you've got that, that these young kids know that they have a voice and are actually being listened to, right. which is wonderful. And then just last week we had the all-female spacewalk. And I know yes. a lot of my friends who have young daughters were really excited to watch that because they have right. young girls that are so interested in space and science. And to be able to see this group of women come together and do something, you know, not many people get the opportunity to do. Yeah. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. So, oh, it's awesome. It's a great right. time. I like that. The little green toy soldier. Yeah. Okay. Did you hear, you know, remember Kurt Cobain from yes. Nirvana? Well, his famous cardigan that he wore during Nirvana's 1993 MTV Unplugged performance is going up for auction again this Friday. Now previously the cardigan was sold four years ago for one hundred and thirty seven thousand dollars. Wow. According to a Rolling Stone article the olive green sweater quote smells like a grandmother's musty attic and contains quote a mysterious stain in one of the pockets. <laughs> but hey it's a part of music history. I'd be curious how much it would go for this time around. I they wonder said... how well they kept it. Right. Oh they said they didn't clean it. Okay, you know, so, so you want to keep the stain on right. it. And that it was something he wore for that unplugged album. I don't know Nirvana very well, but that's the only album I know. Yeah. So if that's like that, you know, that's their biggest thing. And that he wore it like for months after that. And they were saying, because af after that was when he had the suicide. And so, you know, so much struggle was going on inside. That was kind of like his security blanket oh, yeah. on the outside. So I think that sweater, any others, he's had other sweaters that have sold for like $75,000. Just that he wore on album covers. Right. So this is going to go for a lot. I'm curious. I'll be curious to see how much it goes yeah. for. He was so iconic when it came to grunge music. And mm -hmm. I mean, he was kind of our childhood a little bit. So yeah, um, you can bid on it if you want. Yeah. OK, we know uh, we're all Nats all the time here on WSA 9, right? We have a crew in Houston, Texas ahead of game one of the World Series, which is tonight set to start at 8.08. So celebrating his birthday today down in Houston, our Reese Waters got a feel of the atmosphere at Minute Maid Park ahead of tonight's game. Welcome.
Welcome to Minute Maid Park, home of the Houston Astros. And why wouldn't we be here? Because what happens when you leave Minute Maid unattended? It attracts gnats. Behind me, you see a team about to lose the World Series. They don't know yet. It's adorable. Let's look at where they play. Now, the first thing you need to pay attention to is the retractable roof. It's 242 feet high. Granted, that's something we all have in common because we have trouble making decisions either. Is it open? Is it closed? Nobody knows. One thing to note, they do have air conditioning, but they don't have heat. So in the wintertime, it could be 40, it could be 80. You come here and you take your chances. Now, one notable feature is the natural grass. Now, this park opened in 2000. It had been since 1964 since a baseball team in Houston played on natural grass. You guys remember the Astrodome where they were basically slipping around on oil? It was very dangerous. Think like FedEx field. One thing they love in Houston is their music and the stadium is no different. 400 speaker cabinets in the seating areas, another thousand in the concourses, all of which will be playing reggaeton at every given moment. Turn that off! Now perhaps the most notable aspect of Minute Maid Park is the train. The park sits on property that used to be the downtown rail yard. That's why there's a train still in the outfield. All of the seating along the third baseline, that's actually where the east-west rail lines used to be. And they ended at Union Station, which is a building that still exists at the corner of Texas and Crawford. The train is actually a replica of a 19th century locomotive circa 1860. And why not? It's not like we're going green or anything like that in 2019. But the railroad is very important to the city of Houston. It created the city, unlike what created Washington, D.C. Dollar, dollar bills, y'all. Oh, Thank you, Reese, <laughs> and happy birthday to you. Hopefully the Nats get you a W. Meantime, the Nats are hosting watch parties at Nationals Park for free for games one and two. Rain or shine, if you're looking for somewhere else to watch the game, try the bullpen, which is located just steps from the ballpark. They'll show the games on the giant screens there. There's also a Walters Sports Bar named after Walter Perry Johnson. He carried D.C.'s team to a World Series title in 1924, so maybe that could be Ooh. your lucky spot. And there's also the Salt Line, which is partially owned by first baseman Ryan Zimmerman. So plenty of options if you want to surround yeah. yourself by Nats fans and watch them take on the Astros. And this is big, WSA 9. We are building an actual dugout this week. We're building the dugout to invite you all to come out and say hello and show us your dugout dance. You're going to find us there any night. There's a home game from 4 to 8 p.m. I'm there Saturday. Kristen's there, I'm there Sunday. Sunday. We're going to be at Yards Park at the Capitol uh, Riverfront. We're also going to be broadcasting live from there. Of course, we're giving away things. So stop on down to the photo booth and come and say hello as we cheer on the Nats.